Veterans Day, Veterans Day to me means uh, it's a time to uh, honor and show gratitude to all of our veterans. Uh, it means so much to them simply to have somebody say thank you for your service. And it doesn't have to only be on Veterans Day. It can be any day, every day. Uh, also, I was very honored and proud to have served my country. Veterans Day means to me that we get to honor all veterans, and me being one is that much better. <laughs> what does it mean to me that I not only um, think a, a lot about that day, but I think about the men who served before me and the men who were serving after me. Veteran, to me, Veterans Day is, means a lot. Not only do I honor that day, but I honor the men who were not here to honor Veterans Day. I guess uh, being in Vietnam and uh, helping those people, uh, they were they were glad we were there to, to protect them. And uh, uh, it was a long year. It was hot and wet, as hot and wet as you ever going to be. Uh, clothes were soaked all day, but uh, all night. But uh, we got through it. I served like uh, Henry did from 1965 in December to 68 in December. So I also was in Vietnam for a year. Uh, I was uh, I was proud to be there and supporting our country, but uh, when we came home, it was a little bit different. Uh, the uh, attitude at home was wrong, uh, or not good, I should say. But uh, we got through it. Um, I served from uh, February 71 to March of 72. Um, at that time, President Nixon was cutting back on troops. And I had enough time in overseas and in the service that I qualified for an early out. Um, I did my basic and... Uh, training in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I was a clerk typist. Um, I got over to Vietnam. Everybody was saying, oh, you got it made, you're clerk typist, you're gonna be sitting behind the desk. Um, I was a clerk typist for a, a CW2 supply officer for the battalion. And his job was to deliver supplies to the five companies in the battalion. And his clerk typist drove the lead jeep in the convoy to deliver the supplies to the. So my thought of clerk typist was a little different after I got over there, but um, the experience, um, it changes your life. Uh, just being in the service and uh, it just, it, I was kind of a, not a hell raiser, but tore around a lot before I went over, but after I got over there, that kind of settled you down and straightened you out. And it's a very good experience. Uh, I went into the recruiter's office. I was engaged. When I, we come home from basic training, we got married, but it was too late to be stationed together. So, he went to New Jersey. I went to Fort Mc back to Fort McClellan, Alabama. That's where you have basic training and you get clerical school. I so I was married when I went back for clerical school. Uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama. I was then stationed in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, which wasn't too far from where my husband was stationed in New Jersey. So three weekends out of the month, he came down. He knew he was going to Vietnam. He did not want me in the Army. 
so he wanted me home with mama. So we tried real hard to get pregnant, and then I was discharged by Thanksgiving. So I was only in from January to Thanksgiving. I was a clerk typist, did my job. I earned PFC, and I was discharged with an honorable discharge. Briefly, I, I served from 1968 to 1970. I served in Vietnam during that time. Um, it was hard at first, but you get used to it. And uh, as far as being in the military, I, I don't have no regrets being in the service at all, not one time. Okay, um, I served our my country, our country, in in a time that was a lot of civil unrest. I was in the Vietnam War period, and there were people in the country that thought everything was terrible, and there were people in the country that thought um, backing the people at war was the most patriotic thing you could do. So that was the time that it all took place. Um, most of my, uh, most of the people that I went to school with, to high school with, wound up going into the military. Some of us volunteered and some of us were, were drafted, were forced to go in. Um, I was in the United States Air Force and um, I was a security policeman, air policeman. Uh, my job was to work in law enforcement uh, part of the time. And the other half of it was that the, the security police were the, the infantry, the ground soldiers for the Air Force. So when I was there, I was in uh, three separate places. I was in Bangor, Maine, and I was in Vietnam, over in Southeast Asia where the war was. And then I was in South Dakota in Rapid City in the Black Hills. Um, I did a lot of things uh, like policemen do when I was uh, working as a law enforcement person. And um, some of the other things I did, I was in charge of um, the security for, uh, for a bunch of intercontinental ballistic missiles that were loaded with nuclear weapons. Uh, there were a hundred atom bombs, nuclear bombs, in the area I was responsible for. Um, so that was, uh, those were the things that I did when I was in Vietnam. I was the, uh, part of the people that uh, guarded the air base against the enemy coming in and blowing up the airplanes. Um, it was a very rewarding time in my life. Uh, it was uh, an example of what happens when you step forward and are a responsible person. The government gave us all kinds of responsibility very young, which is very, that, that doesn't happen when you just go into the workforce. Uh, the thing I missed most was my wife. Uh, we got married uh, 13 days before I left for overseas uh, because I originally was assigned to an accompany tour, which meant your wife slash family, and we didn't have a, a family at the time, but my wife was going to join me <clears throat> in about uh, two months. And I got over there, and long story short, the air base I was at, I was also in the Air Force, uh, the air base I was at got shut down, and I got sent to a 13-month isolated tour in Korea. And so uh, after leaving uh, the United States and thinking I was going to see my wife in two months, it was uh, 13 months before I seen her again. So I missed her the most. Probably home, uh, my family, because it was hard enough to write home because it was they were really um, careful about what we wrote home. So um, I think of everything, not seeing the family and um, not knowing what was going on because it was kept from us quite a bit, pretty quiet. So uh, one of the other questions, uh, one of the other things I want to talk about was what did I miss most when I was overseas? 
I was overseas for 369 days, eight hours, and I don't remember exactly how many minutes now. But I was, it was my turn to come home when things were very, very bad over there. And um, it, it was very difficult for a lot of us to get out. But what I missed the most when I was overseas was everything American. Uh, the rest of the world, and especially in Asia, is not like where we live now, not like our country at all. Uh, people have very different values. Uh, they have very different moral codes. Um, uh, things are really different. So I miss the, the, I miss my friends, I miss my family, I miss being able to have a job in a factory somewhere or in a store somewhere or whatever. Um, but what I really missed the most was American food. Um, I missed hamburgers. There were no hamburgers. And, uh, and I missed pizza. There was no pizza over there. So that's what I missed most while I was about being overseas. Um, family, I wasn't married yet then, but my mother was real sick. And uh, that's the main thing of just not being home. There was enough camaraderie there. You, you was okay there, but you still that far from home. You like to be home, but you didn't have a choice, but that, that's my, it was the biggest thought was the family, seeing the family and stuff.